Okay, so now this is what you call a bison jam. Bison's all over there. And oh no, the bisons are crossing the street. I mean, cross, yeah. See, they're all the way down there and they're crossing. That's why that's where the bison jam's coming from. And it's backed up all the way out there. I don't know how to help them get out. But yeah, the bisons are crossing to get with them. It's causing the jam. My first bison jam. Awesome. Mud volcano. You can smell the sulfur. Let's go up there. Well, let's go over here first. And then we'll venture off in the, over there. This way, it looks Pretty like much dangerous ground. Don't walk off the path or die. If you follow the signs, they want you to go up that okay. one and yeah, around. Let's go. Let's go. All right, let's follow the song. They, they, that's smart. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go this way and then come back down. That's, that's the path they want us to take, and that's what we're going to take. Oh, yeah, if you want a maps, $1 donation. Unfortunately, I only got 40 bucks, so I have zero. <laughs> I have zero dollars on me right now. Spent all that uh, last week cleaning the car coming back from Florida. Now you can see a lot of, I think it is bison. I think when this is all frozen over in the winter time, they come here to be in these areas um, to probably stay warm. That's what I think that's what's happening. As you can see a lot of the bisons, the trail marks, the it's in the mud and everything. That's why you think the bisons come here and they use this area to stay warm and probably get into the vegetation here. Um, to to eat, store up, so you can see it all up, all the footprints.
speaking of bisons, a rare treat indeed it is. Didn't I tell you bisons come up here? A rare treat. And of course I left the big camera in the car. God, it's got the GoPro out here. I didn't want to bring the big camera. The thing is pretty hefty to bring it up hills. And I'm extremely out of shape. We got a little bit of elevation. Hopefully it's not too bad, but haven't did a hike in a minute, guys. Like, what, over two weeks? <laughs> you know, if you don't exercise to get to hikes, yeah, she ate. <laughs> Bison. Oh, I don't like bison poo. Like, why are we showing today? I'm just showing you because <laughs> I don't I take a picture of everything. And always remember to stay on the walk. Don't venture off. Because even though it's a park, it's not a it's not a real it's not like a it's not a playground. Respect nature and nature will respect you back. When they do come here and they do eat the vegetation, I think it does grind their teeth down a lot because of the um, of the sulfur. If I remember correctly. We're pretty much at the Black Dragon's Cauldron. The mud pot roared into existence in 1948, blowing trees out by the oh, blowing trees out by roots and forever changing this once quiet forest, first hillside. A park interpreter named the new feature for it resembles it to a darkly colored demon of the backwoods. For several decades, it erupted an explosive. Uh, 10 to 20 
foot bursts of black mud and over the years it has it has moved 200 to the south east and became relatively quiet however as change is constant in yellowstone the black dragon may one day roar back to life that's pretty much what happened here did all this sort of vegetation and changed changed it forever when nobody's here from Yellowstone's magma chamber, this muddy pool churns and cooks, shaken again and again by earthquakes. The temperature beneath it rises and falls, transforming, churning cauldron. Oh, so I was supposed, supposed to start this way and then go around the other way. Oops. Look at that. So this is where we should have started and then went all the way up and then all the way around. But that didn't happen. <laughs> Oh, this is called the cooking hillside. Wow. Okay, that's this is what we were seeing over here in the area of the dramatic change. So in 1978 to 1979, numerous trees died in, in the smoldering ground, leaving behind their fallen trunks as a reminder of their once stately presence. So that's what we saw right here. And this is the vanishing pines. See, this is what it looked like before, as seen in the aerial photograph. Um, the woodlands grew here before se uh, 1978. This is what it looked like. And then this is what it look this is the aftermath of what it looked like today. Um, and see and this and this is what happens when uh, covered by a dense forest until 1978, the hillside changed dramatically after a swarm of earthquakes struck the area. And in spite of being jolted again and again, the trees remained standing but met their demise soon afterward when ground temperatures soared to 200 to Fahrenheit or 94 Celsius. Roots sizzled, sizzled in the superheated soil and trees toppled over one by one as steam rose airily between the branches. No wonder the hill was, du was dubbed Cooking Hillside. So that's, that's what you're seeing all right here with the dead trees. 
And that's why they tell you to stay on the path. <laughs> <laughs> the kids can't take this over. Like, oh my god! Ah. <laughs> See, this is where we're supposed to see. I thought we're, we started here, even though I thought we were starting here, but that was not the case. I thought we were starting here, but we started here at my volcano. So now I'm gonna go back and go to Dragon's Mouth Spring and finish that little loop around and come back to my car. But this is where we're supposed to go with this route, all the way up and then to Black Dragon and all the way down. See, I, I thought we were doing that, but we, Start at my volcano. But, yeah. Also, when you do come up here with food, with drinking, and no pets, these his little dogs over there enjoying himself and hopefully a very cool, cool, cool car. I think the car is kind of still that, still running, got the air from him on. I, I don't know. I hope that's the case because even with windows down like that, dogs can still, um, it still get hot in those cars. Dragon's Mouth Spring, an unknown park visitor named this feature around 1912, perhaps due to the water that frequently surged from the cave like the lashing of a dragon's tongue. Until 1994, this dramatic wave-like action often splashed water as far as the boardwalk. Okay, oh, okay, the rumbling sounds are caused by the steam and other gases exploding through the water, causing it to crash against the walls of the hidden caverns. Sounds like a dragon. Yeah, it does. Power. Now, just a few minutes away from Mud Volcano, it's called Sulfur uh, Cauldron. Now, actually, if you, depending on how you, which way you come from, if you're coming from Hayden Valley, you will be hitting the Sulfur Cauldron first, and then you'll be hitting the Mud Volcano area. But if you were coming down, coming up from West Thumb, you're going to hit Mud Volcano first, and then just a few, like a, a hot skip away, you're going to run into Sulfur Sulfur Cundrum. So it's 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 very good and interesting to visit both places. I mean, you're you're right there anyway, and I highly recommend um, visiting Sulfur Cundrum. It's just it's just very little spot right there, and it's not like a long path like Mud Volcano is. So if you're, you are coming to the area of Mud Volcano, just take a little minute to Sulfur Cundrum as well. Thank you. 
please. We are at the, the Felfer Conundrum. 10 times more acidic than lemon juice. The Felfer Conundrum sits on the edge of one of the most active areas of the Yellowstone's buried volcano. So, sulfurish gases rises furiously here, filling sulfur cauldron with sulfuric acid incredibly. This muddy pool is teeming with life. The volcanic landscape. You are inside a tundra of one of the largest volcanoes in the world. And the volcano has erupted at least three times, and Yellowstone is full of signs that volcanic activity is still very much alive below ground. And so, where's the room? Yellowstone tundra? Is 30 miles wide and 45 miles long, and it's so huge it is difficult to imagine the massive eruption that created it. Wow. After the volcano exploded, lava continued to flow, filling it much more, much of the conjure and making the crater and its realm hard to see. So this is the second Yellowstone eruption 1.3 million years ago. So it's scary. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Please keep subscribing to Coast Guy Adventures as I bring you guys more footage from my journey from Yellowstone National Park. Also, follow me on Instagram and also follow me on Facebook. I do post up a lot of information about the national parks, such as road closures and reservations of campgrounds. And you should be making those reservations like yesterday if you want to get those and enjoy the parks going forward pretty much until the future. That, that there are a lot of these campgrounds are being reservations only and you want to stay on top of that information of when those dates do drop and i do try to post them on my facebook as much as possible so follow me on facebook follow me on instagram um i will see you guys later